Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Good Children. Don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon for more episodes. It is $7 a month. You are getting one episode extra per week dropping every Friday. And on Patreon, you're getting, I feel like, the real, like, the tea about what's going on in our mm -hmm. lives. Most of my dates. You would sit down to dinner on a first date with someone? Yes, Joe. Why? I don't know. Because I'm hungry. The drama, the dating, the romance, the sex, the sadness, the depression, <laughs> the side effects of our life-crushing fame. Yes. Everything and anything that we feel deserves to be behind a paywall. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. And let me tell you something. The, the, our current patrons, thank you for subscribing. You, you really do oh. see it all. You see every mental state. And you see... But most and recently, you, see, you saw full naked bodies. And do with that what you will. No, you look like you belong. Never mind. Where? I was going to say, with the hat, you <sighs> the hat is giving me, like, you belong on the Jersey Shore at this sh one of the shops. And it should say Thank hashtag you. YOLO on it. Thank you. You're welcome, but it looks amazing. Good children. What happened? I was going to ask you a very similar question. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 22 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And all of the nostalgia. Drama. And first impressions. You like, you like how I... Whisper. I didn't even finish my oh. <laughs> sentence. And first impressions that go along with it. Today's all about first impressions. Okay, let's do something. First impressions. If you were to see me right now in this outfit, first time, first impression, what am I giving you? You work in like tech. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of straight friends. Mm -hmm. You love an IPA. Um, I feel like you honestly, like, maybe were, like, on the developmental team for Allbirds. I love that. And you, like, summer in, like, Nantucket. I'm obsessed with this. Yeah. Yeah. You? You just, like, want to keep talking about my outfit. Like, No, I'm not even so going to. I was actually going, I was going to go really nice. But okay, I, say it. Because no, you already said, like, I sell hats on the Jersey Shore. Some people who do sell hats on the Jersey Shore are living a beautiful life. I did, no one denied that. But I, I wasn't giving, I wasn't trying to give Jersey Shore boardwalk vendor. Well, I was painting a beautiful life for you. So, Were you? Yeah. I was going to say, you do look like you work in fashion. You're somebody who, like, is obsessed with, like, a Starbucks drink. It makes it your personality. What? Um, I just felt like you were projecting. This is the thing so that I no one knows about Andrew. I'm literally just dishing back what you just served me on I said platter. you like you were in tech and that you summer in Nantucket. I said you look rich. You look like a rich person who I just said the same thing. Workers. I said you work in fashion and you love Starbucks. You said I would. I love a, one Starbucks drink and would make it my entire personality. <laughs> like, listen to yourself. So cunty. So what are we talking about today? What are we talking about? You know what time of year it is. Ding ding ding! It's back, it's back to, to school. school. It's back to school. Are you excited? You if, love school. I did, Joe. It was just a social event. It was just like a social gathering. But like, obviously, the first day was always the best day because I had nothing to worry about. Then I got sick. See, then it's I got reversed tried. for me. Yeah. I was worried about the first day. And then once that was over, I was like, I'm done caring. So I have to give you guys a recap of my first day. No, because you already have planned every, you've curated everything for that first day. You're like, I'm showing up looking really sexy. I know that I don't really need anything due. Nothing's due. I sometimes, I feel like in high school it got to the point when I was like, I have a fucking macroeconomics essay to hand in on my first day of school that I was supposed to work on all summer. No. Absolutely not. Speaking of work. Summer reading. I loved summer reading. I loved summer reading. No, some of us, some of us loved summer reading. But like, what were you reading? I remember vividly a separate piece being a big one. A separate piece. Are you familiar with it? Joe. 
Uh, no, that's a separate piece. <laughs> I remember reading a separate piece going into ninth grade, and I was just like, whoa, this book is gay? Like, I read it, like, and this should have been my answer that I was Was it was actually gay, gay and you no, were reading it? No, but I read it, and I fully interpreted it as being, like, a gay love story. Um, and I was going into ninth grade. It's very much, like... And they were roommates, you know? It's, like, two boys mm. at boarding school who kind of, like, are best friends. But then, like, something happens where they, like, start hating each other. And there's, like, one of them pushes the other one out of a tree. And, like, I feel like that is, like, the moment where it's, like, they want to fuck so badly. Like, they can't express it. So they're, like, sk- they're, like, skiing. I have to reread it. It kind of slays down boots, I would say. I think that you should read it in a non-gay way. Why can't I read it in a gay way? No, I think you can read it in a gay way. But, like, that's beautiful and that's amazing. But... I would challenge your brain to take it in in the not so gay way. Why? Just so you can understand that perspective. I don't need to understand the perspective. Everything else is that perspective. I only want to read things from a gay perspective. I'm gay. What? After a separate piece came out, the author came out as gay and then confirmed that a separate piece is a love story between two two boys. So sometimes you should read you should read text in a queer lens in the ninth grade. You didn't like summer reading? I didn't love summer reading because, again, I just felt... Like you didn't want to read. It wasn't that. I was. St- I still need to dive into, like, why I would open the book and I would immediately be like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to write something. Like, I'm going to need to know this book in and out. That's why I would resort to spark notes. <sighs> I know. I got, to the, I got to a spark notes point, like, towards the end of high school, I feel like. I loved, remember, did you ever do, like, the reading at the library over the summer? I don't believe you did. I feel like I remember you saying that you were going to the library, and I was like, they had no. like They had a game, I guess it was also called Summer Reading. It was like the summer reading program at the library, and you mm. would go, and you'd read a book, and you'd come back, and you'd, you'd like, trade in your book and get a toy. And I well, you love toys. sweep. You're, Every you love summer. boy toys. And if you know, you know, like the smell of a library in the summer, that like going nice. in from the heat into a freezing cold air conditioned space filled with books. And the librarians are always so, so sweet. sweet. Dream job. Dream job. It's hard to get a library job. I know that. It's hard. To, it's a very difficult Wait, job. Wait, what do you mean? Get. It's not an easy job to become a librarian. It's kind of like getting like a, a job out. at Cheesecake Factory. Is that hard to get? It's really hard to get. How do you know that? I know a few people who went through the process. Who? Let's just say they need to know the the menu in and out. Every single page. Do you think there are people out there that have never spark noted? Yeah, I'm sure. I think that really, really, really classy kids. I could think of one girl who I went to high school with who I guarantee you ne- doesn't even know what spark notes is because she was actually well read and it's because her parents were British. It's That's what it is. So if my parents were British, I would read more. I have a feeling. That sucks. <laughs> if they were British and emigrated to the United States. Okay. That makes a lot. Okay. Now there's like a lot of parameters. There's about some it. layers like, to it. How, like I why think, I don't read. I think if you're just a naturally born British citizen who's been raised in the UK, you're not reading. But I okay. think if you moved here, there's an expectation to be better read than an American. Yes. Because there's something about it's Shakespeare. It's the accent. I kind of just remember the countdown starting when school supplies were up in a Target. Which was there maybe in it June. earlier and earlier. Like, honestly, you would... Because one of the best experiences, I believe, that you could have as a child and as an adult is just going to Target in the summer. Do you know what I mean? A I, summer trip to Target? Because this is... And I don't know if this is for every Target, but we were very fortunate that our Target had a Starbucks. Yes. So but remember you, when I did, remember before it was a Starbucks and that Target had like, uh, it was like a, just a cafe. What the hell? The was that like a Pizza Hut? It was like, a, yeah, there was like a Pizza Hut, a combination Pizza Hut and something else. There were Slurpees. There was like breadsticks. You could get everything you wanted. You're at going a Target to Target. Cafe. You're getting a, f- you're getting a feast as you walk around. I never really wanted to walk around Target. I feel like I wanted to do my own thing around Target. I wanted to do my own. What does that mean? Jerk off? Jerk off into Target. Why are you putting me, you, like, literally, you're planting seeds that I just would jerk anywhere. And I'm not going to jerk in a Target. You've yet. never jerked off into Target? So, no, I've never jerked off into Target. Where would I do it? I don't know. Target was a sense of freedom. 
Yes. Because you go with your mom, but you could be like, I'll meet you by the cafe. Because I feel like my mom was focusing on the core of Target. Yeah. And I, I was looking at the outskirts. Yeah. Toys, electronics. Yep. Books. Mm-hmm. Seasonal food. Food. But the back to school section, I'll tell you one Ruining thing. Ruining my life whenever I Ruining saw it. Ruining my life. But I did love every single year they had always, they had always had a little something different. But I knew my eyes were immediately going to five star. Five star was notebooks, my. The notebooks. Those were my notebooks. I hate a spiral notebook. Enough of this shit. Enough. Why? I feel like we actually went too far in scientific advancement when it came to a spiral notebook. Like, Why? What's what's going on with spirals? It's just like there's like a textural issue. Like they like are like they kind of scrape. You know what I mean? I don't like the do. the, the paper seems thinner sometimes in a spiral notebook. Hmm. I don't think it feels as substantial to write on. Well, it's easy when the when the fucking perforated edge rips a little. And you know it would. Did the perforated edges always exist, or was that like a like a I think more recent optional invention? Optional perforated edges. I think okay. that you could have one or the other. Okay. But when the when f- it started to unravel a little bit, and then you and unra- poke, it stabs. It's, a stick it's and like poke? your braces when your braces would rip, that and was... then they would stab your cheeks. And I'll tell you one thing: if you were getting a paper, a paper cover, and not that hard plastic, that paper shit oh. always ripped. Were you a color coordinator, or did you? What do give you think? Shits? What do you think? No. Red, social studies. Yellow, English. Green, science. Blue was math. Because I like. Blue is my favorite color. Seven plus eight. Fifteen. Okay. I just said usually. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> seven plus eight <laughs> being the question, like, my seven-year-old niece could answer that. <laughs> that's really scary that that's the bar. Target versus Staples. I didn't really. In- I went to Staples, like. For the shit that was on the on the syllabus, which was always insane. You would go into school on your first day, and your teacher would say, you need a 68-pack of tissues. What was that about? Why was I buying the tissues? I understand teachers are not being paid enough, and I understand all of that shit. But I would be like, they oh. were saying tissues. They were like bringing as many boxes of tissues as you physically can carry on your body. Like I was always bringing in tissue boxes. Yeah, some of the things just didn't feel like it tied into the curriculum. No, which is fucked up. That's the American education system that the teachers have to ask their students to bring in tissues. And it got to a certain point where Staples would be the place you needed to go for the next generation of of calculators why was i buying another 300 dollars calculator every year for four years what was that about wait why were we doing that like fuck texas instruments on god if i ever ran into the the ceo of texas Texas Instruments, instruments it would be on site on site on site they're building out the dumbest stupidest calculators and then it got to the one that was do you remember the one that was like kind of skinny at the bottom and thick at the top did you ever have her? I've heard of that. That was like the most advanced one at the time because you needed it for like trigonometry. I don't think I ever got to that math class. Then I had trig and that was okay. I had the same teachers last year that I had for geometry. You shouldn't be typing into your calculator things that aren't just numbers. No. Like I why am I putting agree. A in my calculator? And like it's just so insane. Like remember sines and cosines? What the fuck? Can you tell me? Gun to your head. Explain what sine is. Oh my god! Right? Shoot me! Shoot, shoot me! Shoot me dead! Cosine was like the opposite. Well, okay, sine. thank you. That's great. That's a great answer. Mm. I even to this day, I never, I haven't had to figure out the area of a square, actually. Yeah, I guess when you, know you look I mean? at it that way, sometimes when it comes to apartments, that's the only time is home decor. Yeah. <laughs> Is, and it is interior design is when you need to use algebra. Otherwise, like, it is not. Fuck. It should be an optional interior design class. You needed to know what the Sosley's triangle was for your bedroom with a tilted wall. Like, yeah. fuck that shit. Fuck math. Fuck it. You love math. Yeah, I mean, obviously I love math, but that's besides the point. Like, it just got your Why? brain. Because it works your brain. Like, your your brain needs to function for it. Writing, I was like, okay, I'm writing. And I was never that good of a writer, so I kind of just, like, shut it down. I just shut it down. Math, I'm like, I feel my brain pumping. It's the it's the left brain, right brain, you know? Yeah, like I Because guess. to me, I'm like, math, I'm like, this is not doing any, this is not stimulating my brain. Writing, I'm like, I get to actually use my brain and, like, think of something and write it down and make it real. And again, I would love 
I, I derived joy out of making sure that my equation was so beautifully written down that the teacher would be able to follow the process. See, perfectly. I was actually intentionally making it so messy that they would not be able to follow the process mm-hmm. in hopes that they'd be like, I'm just going to give them an A. The worst was when you are cheat. Well, I don't know if you, you were a big cheater. I never chaught in my entire but life. But if you were chaughting on a math exam, but you know the final answer, but you didn't know how to get there, Mm-mm. the worst, the worst, because then it'd be like the hardest problem, and then you're just like 58, and they're like, how did you come up with this? What do you say to that? I don't know. That's why I never cheated. You say, I, I came up with this because of Emily? No. You say, oh my god. I forgot to write it down. But if you loved math so much, why were you cheating in math? I was cheating less in math, but like there was, I was just cheating across the board. Why? Joe, like I was struggling because I needed, I, I was striving for perfection. But did you feel like it was perfection when you cheated? Like, did you still feel like I accomplished something? I do. I do. And that's scary. Hmm. I know. Fuck staples. Fuck. Wait. I didn't think we were going to go there with that. Staples is straight in a way that is devastating. Do you Target think... is equally as devastatingly gay. I do believe, though, that Staples, while being devastatingly straight... Is an is, ally. Yes, is willing to lend a listening ear. I almost see Staples as like a Darren Chris, That kind of straight. Like... Darren Chris is straight? <laughs> Wait, no, like, I'm actually... Darren Chris is straight. Darren Chris is like married with children. I didn't even Darren, if you're listening, I'm I really am Darren Chris has been straight. Has been straight. Oh wow, I was off the Darren Chris train for a while. Speaking of straight though, someone that's n- not willing to lend a listening ear in my opinion, Home Depot. No, Home Depot is a lesbian. Then what's Lowe's? Lowe's is a conservative straight man. I I literally, every single time I've met Home Depot, I felt like they were conservative. Lowe's, I go in there and I see that blue at the front. And I'm That's like, MAGA. You? That might as well be a Trump sign at the front of Lowe's. You're kidding me. I think so much so. Bad Bath & Beyond. Maybe a bisexual woman who's dating a woman. Me. Is Target a turf? Trans exclusionary radical feminist? Yes. I don't even want to ask you the question because I do believe that, like, you're going to say no immediately because why would you care? But were you ever on Rate My Teacher? Yeah, of course. Rate My Professor? Yeah, I was rating my teachers. You were you were personally rating? Obviously. Were you reading? Yeah. Why would that be where I draw the line? I just felt like you could care less who your teacher was. No, I would constantly switch classes. It's the 5.0s that were, like... I hated those bitches. Sunshine, rainbows. Fuck them. You barely learned anything. Looking back on high school or schooling in general, I'm like, you should be failing. Like, you should, like, you shouldn't be failing, but, like, you can get a failing grade. You can get a not-so-great grade. And I feel like with those teachers that got the 2.0s or those professors that got the 2.0s, they were letting you. So hard. The class was so hard. It should be. It should be. School should be hard. But it should be fun. It and should that's be hard and what, fun. That is what the first day of school is about. Fun. Famous people from Massapequa. Alec Baldwin. Baldwin. Jerry we Seinfeld. We all know what happened with Alec Baldwin. Jerry Seinfeld, Seinfeld. dated a, a, a 17-year-old when he was in his 30s. Picked her up from high school. Robbie Shapiro from Victorious. I can't. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Massapequa natives. Let's go. Um, Those are the only three I know are Robbie, Alec, and... Jerry. And Jerry. That's... Call it the Holy Trinity to sound. It's kind of. It really is. Especially Robbie. Robberazzi. We have no, no like, women holding down the fort. In Massapequa? I can't think of one. Adding us two. No. 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 Well, that stinks. That does suck. Waiting for... And I do, I do miss this part because I feel like we would get our schedule in the mail. Yes. That was the best day ever being like going home and I'm hearing from my friend that they already got their schedule. Yeah. I didn't get my schedule yet. You're waiting by the mailbox. To be like, how is my next year going to be defined? When is lunch? It, will it be at 930 in the morning or will it be at 2 p.m.? And I preferred it being earlier. You preferred lunch, getting lunch out of the way? Because you start, 
who created the school schedule? Because you start school at about four in the morning. <laughs> you start school at four in the morning. You're eating lunch at six fifty eight a.m. and then you're leaving school at two. It's kind of crazy. I'm like, let the kids. It should. Kind of similar to elementary school. We started at 9, right? I think so. It should be 9 to 3. Yeah, I feel like my first class of the day... Can I be... I have to be wrong. I think it was at 7.25 a.m. No, that's was normal. first period. That's first period. What the hell? Your What the not hell? Not only did your eyes need to be open, your brain needed to be functioning. functioning. Are you joking? At 7.30 in the morning? I, and can you... And you know what they were making these kids do? The early classes? Early classes, they, they had early classes. They had you coming in before school sometimes. Those band kids, those band kids, they were weren't there. sleeping. They were waking up. They were. It was actually like being in the military. Going, yeah, going to zero period. Zero period. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they were thinking zero they were like, period. What can we call going into school, school. before it starts? Before <laughs> what can we call going into school before zero the sun period. rises? Zero period and the early bus. The early, early bus. bus. Regardless of any school, any high school, whatever, why are you doing two days? Unless you're going to the Olympics, there's no other reason. There's no other reason to be getting in a pool at five. I was doing two a days. I was doing two pop tarts a day. I was just about to say <laughs> two <laughs> pop tarts a day. Two pop tarts a day makes a lot of sense. That was my two a day. Zero period. Absolutely not. But back to the schedule. Yeah. Getting that in the mail. Opening it up. Taking a picture and posting it to Facebook. Immediately. And again, it was one of the first, I think, introductions for me of, like, feeling as if though I was an influencer of sorts. Okay. Because the amount of comments that would flow in. Being like, oh, my God, I have this. I I have this. this, I have this. What's interesting, and I think what ages us, is, like, I just remembered that, like, toward the end of high school for me, my schedule would be available online. Like, it would drop online Mm. on a certain date. And I'm like, these kids are not getting schedules in the mail anymore. Like, you're not waiting by the mailbox to get your class schedule. Like, it's being uploaded to an app and on your same phone. Same thing with your report card. Like, I was waiting oh. for the mail. It looked like almost like a check. And you had, had to, to rip every edges. side of it. And then you open it up and you're like, oh, my God. Parent-teacher night? Parent-teacher night. How did that go for you? I kind of want to go to one. As who? A parent, a teacher, or a child? <laughs> now that you put it in that context, Where will it's a you... little weird. It's a little weird. It's almost <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm almost going at as a fourth party. They're like, what is he doing He's here? He's just observing. He's just He's here. Just here I'm just walking through the halls like, hey. I'll never forget. Parent, teacher night, seventh grade. <gasps> eighth grade, I want to say. I had earth science. That's eighth grade yes. for us? Eighth grade earth science, I failed a quiz. It was the first time I didn't tell my mom that, like, I failed something. It was the first time I ever probably failed something in my life. So I didn't tell my mom, right? I was like, this is not her business. It's not for her to find out. I'll handle this. I'll deal with this on my own. Obviously, I tell my classmates. I tell my My mom goes to parent-teacher night. She's sitting next to mom. She doesn't say something to her mom says to my mom. I heard Joe's kind of struggling. I heard he failed that quiz. My mom says, what quiz? I get a call. For, and the worst moment of my oh. life, I'm here. Like, my dad is, like, ordering me and my sister pizza. We're, like, on Razor scooters in the house. We're like, Having mom's so not home. Fun. Mom's not home. It's a party time. The, ho- the house phone rings. It's Patty's number. My dad hands me the phone. She's like, what's this about a failed earth science quiz? That <laughs> has to tell me about that you couldn't tell me about yourself? <laughs> I wanted to die. I was like, I think I remember being like, honestly, it's insane that that woman told you my business. Like, that's crazy (laughs) that she is a grown ass woman comes into parent teacher night. And it's not my teacher. It's not like it's not like Miss Devine said it. No. Said fuck Joe. Said I want Joe punished punished and I don't want him going back to class. I don't want him near my son. No. I was a bad influence. Dumbass. Yeah, that dumbass kid failing an earth science test. Look at Joe now. I did love a parent teacher conference. I will say my only memory, I went to a parent teacher conference. Same. And you like sat outside in the hallways. Well, well, I went for my brother's parent teacher conferences. Oh. 
and it you didn't go in. It didn't go over well. It I'm didn't sure. go over well. They and the only teacher that said I couldn't be there, it was the band teacher. <laughs> she saw me walking in, and in front of all of the parents, looked at my mom and said, "He can't be here. He can absolutely not be here." And then my mom was like, "Upset." She was upset. She started something. Went to the principal. Said something. I love my mother because she really will say something. Yeah. He can't be here. He can't be you here. You were just like, this, something about you was like, you just were demanding occupancy of spaces that Always. you were not invited to be in. It's kind of a leech. You, It's like brings us back to Odyssey of the Mind. Yeah. He can't be here. And like, what why the, were you there? But like, who the fuck are you? Like, the teacher, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I was in any clubs in middle school. No, we did Odyssey the Mind. What are you saying? Oh, we did do that. We did Odyssey the Mind, and we were also, Joe, both a part of the Junior National Honor Society. That's not a club. Was to me. If my kids are the Honor Society, I'm not putting a bumper sticker on my car. Were we lighting candles? Are you talking about, um... For the National Honor Society? I have no idea what you're talking about. It wasn't a candle lighting ceremony? What? I could have swore we were lighting a candle. I am I thinking about church? I think you're thinking about church. I can't imagine any ceremony with school where candles are being lit. No, Joe. I actually, it just hit me. I was lighting a candle. I think you did the scam one. I was candlesticking it. You weren't candlesticked. For what? I think one of these dumb honor societies. Clubs in high school felt different. Clubs in college, you weren't. I yeah I can't talk about this. Well, I'll tell you one thing for those for the first day of school activities fairs activities fairs. You didn't go to your school's activities fair, Joe. I don't even know what that is. You didn't like. I can only assume that Hofstra had a bustling activities fair on their quad. I'm sure. I wasn't I, there. That's something about that pains me. I don't think it pains me. I loved walking around. I loved talking at people at different booths. I loved going up to them saying, acapella? Wait, maybe me. All I could think of is, like, I feel like you're just describing that scene in Pitch Perfect, and I don't want you to get into it. I don't want you to get into Pitch Perfect right now. You don't want to talk about my baloney barb tits? How do you feel the pressure to make a good first impression as a child on the first day of school has played out into your adult life? I think that solely focusing on the first impression to the teachers was a little bit debilitating growing up until because were you now. ever trying to make a good first impression to your like classmates or is it like i feel like first no. day of school it was only prioritizing like if a teacher liked me they didn't Correct. give a fuck if my classmates no. liked me at all no i wasn't Almost going in there to make never. friends no if you look at if you look at the school year yep. as a life sentence right okay and you look at the grade the report card your final gpa as heaven or hell you would do anything to get into heaven, but you weren't. We weren't trying to actually act holy. We weren't trying to like we wanted to be seen on paper as the best possible child, right? Mm. We wanted to be seen as like well-rounded in yeah. all these clubs, like volunteers, charitable volunteers. We were we were volunteering for shit, but we were only volunteering for shit so that we looked good on paper, so we can get the four so that mm-hmm. we can get into the college. So like literally, it's like the. And I'm not talking about actual Catholicism, but the fucked up. Like, what has happened to religion where it's, like, people use it as an excuse to be horrible. Yeah. Like, we kind of were using being good as an excuse to be bad. Which I think is what we've always been saying, but that is literally it. Like That's why. Being yeah. good at school, being seen as good was my excuse to be terrible to other people. Because I was like, it doesn't actually matter. And you think about all those kids, like, all those 4.0 bitches... We all know they were bitches. Like, they were all terrible. Paris Geller, Gilmore Girls, is a perfect example. Yeah, it's true. Like, the people who were doing it all were terrible. They were terrible people. Because they were only focused on getting into heaven. They were only focused on that 4.0. Again, all I can think about is looking me in the face and saying, you want to get into Georgetown? Good luck. Did you? No. But yeah, no, I was absolutely one of them. And I also, to the cheating point, would do anything it took for me to be seen as one of those. But as of the course, that like, was the goal. That was me being bad. I don't think I was necessarily bad to other people. I think it was really fucking annoying. That's why someone keyed your car and stole your windshield wipers. 
because I was crying until like 10th grade. Yeah. And being like, well, I'm going to get to Georgetown. And they were like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, you I wait think, and see. I think we've all been terrible. Do you yeah. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, I think that we've all been terrible in our own unique ways. I, But I still do believe some people actually just weren't. Like, there yeah. are people I could think of who I'm like, I wish I was like them. Mm. I really do wish I was just sweet. Like, I wish I was born sweet. Yeah. I wish I wasn't born with this judgmental, discerning, loud-ass, opinionated mind that mm. I have. But I think so many people see themselves in high school and they're like, that was a terrible human being. Mm -hmm. I know. I am shocked that, again, I made it through middle school and high school and I still have friends from those years and people that I was friendly with in high school that knew me through those stages and either listen to the pod or acknowledge what we're doing and are like, really good for you. I'm yeah. like, you should look me in the face and That's be like, like fuck, fuck you. you. If you could do it all over again, if you tomorrow had your first day of school. Would you do anything differently? Well, yeah. What? One, I think I would come out immediately. Okay. I really do think that'd be priority number yes. one. Suffer the consequences of that all I want. Would you, speaking of the coming out, and this is a side note from school, would you say it out loud or would you just in your act, just like be talking about well, it casually? D- d- no, well, now we're going to get into details here. Now Am into- I time traveling back to 2010? Let's, or- do, let's do 2010. Let's do ninth grade. It's different than I don't even know if I would come out. Like, Born This Way hasn't even come out yet. It's freshman year. And you're gonna be here for the next four years. Okay, if it was, like, Read It and Weep, kind of. If I had, like, myself and then, like, Royal, the alter ego, who was me as an adult. Yep. This is a fun concept. If 14-year-old Joe was Mm -hmm. stepping into St. Anthony's and 27-year-old Joe was able to provide guidance, I would be like, you should be yourself. Yeah. Yes. First and foremost. The moment that you do start acting like yourself and, like, stop repressing shit is the moment you stop being evil. Like, all evil is 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 being mad at other people for being happy. Yeah. Like, and, like, that was me in high school. Like, anyone who seemed comfortable with themselves, I was like, fuck you. Like, you're a fucking freak. You're a weirdo. And, like, I'm so cool because I'm, like, keeping all this shit inside. I would say come out. I think coming out would literally just cause a butterfly effect for the rest. I think I would probably, like, do theater, would, like, by doing theater, like, make more friends, probably date someone in high school, like, you know, like, join clubs, like, have a social life, probably get a license, and, like, have a completely different life now. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be working an office job, and I think I'd have a house on Long Island. Sounds kind of nice to me. It's a freshman year. What would you do? I think that I would put a lot more less effort hopefully into my appearance or like my first day of school first day of school outfits are fun but like i was so focused you were putting on effort into your appearance so in yeah. high school a shock a shockingly all i, I saw know. you in was a pair of sweatpants and a sweatshirt every day for four not on years. the first day not on the first day maybe senior year not on the first day yes i always listen to your number one i'm sorry your number Stop one takeaway on for high like. school was to put less pressure on your no, appearance like your no. kim kardashian that was one of the top that was one of the one of the things i will say the other thing would stop being a people pleaser going forward like again maybe leaning into being a little bit more of a bitch but in a way of like me not actually being bitchy but me like not being like you know what i mean yeah, like kind you, of. a little bit of a pushover. Yeah, I think that's what I was sure. getting. And I also, like, obviously should not be focusing on my grades. That's what I figured you were going to leave yeah, with. Yeah, no, I, I was keeping that one for the icing on the cake. But, yeah, obviously, like, and if this goes for any listener, if you're going to college, any, whatever, like, the grades. The grades. Fuck grades. Fuck the grades. Because, baby, you're an A. You're the biggest A I've ever seen. Thank you so much. You wake up tomorrow morning, you're the next Michelle Obama. They say you're in charge of school lunches in this country. What's on the menu? What's on the menu? Oh, listen, I'm not getting rid of french fries. French fries, if you want them every single day, for sure. So be it. So be it. And you know what? You know what? I'm not gonna charge you a dollar for them. Were they a dollar extra? A dollar extra for french fries. I wanted the fries. Okay. And I was paying the dollar. Right, of course. But 
for me, I don't see a trade off in that situation. I agree. Okay, what else? Um, we're getting we're getting burgers, but okay. I'm not talking this stale bun shit. I'm talking. You want a double patty? Sure. Sure. Stale buns. You didn't think that this... I didn't have the same school lunch as you. Oh, because they were always reheated, so like you I felt like the bottom bun was always a little bit tough. I would not stay away from like the fatty foods. Again, you can make choices as a kid. Like mm-hmm. if that's what you want, you can make it. I'm very fortunate that high school and beyond there was ample amounts of options that you can choose from. You can do a deli section. That's what I think schools deserve though. Is a deli section? A deli section. Because you might not want hot food. No. You might want a roast beef. I always had a deli section as well, I believe. That's nice. Not I school. think I would make my... I think in an ideal world, I'm partnering the United States government with Panera Bread. And I think that every school's cafeteria should be a Panera. Like, that should be the vibe. It is... It kind of... Sh- you know what I mean? Like, soups and sandwiches. Soups and sandwiches. But... An occasional pizza, a uh, salad. Uh, thoughts on bowls. Like a bread bowl, like well, bread bowls. But oh, like, like a like a like quinoa a bowl, bowl or something. Yeah, or like a, well, that would be amazing. I'm kind of like, now that you mentioned it that way, Joe, wouldn't it just make it easier if it was like a fast casual restaurant? It should be like a you should all you should get up there and you should order a bowl. It should be customized, different grains, different greens, different proteins, and every single day it should be that because you can have a different meal every day the whole school year with the same twenty five ingredients. <laughs> Whoa. Congress, I'm so excited to start this discussion. I'm kind of starving boots. I'm kind of starving the house down. And I've been staring at these Tate's Bake Shop, Southampton, New York. Pumpkin Spice. Wasn't Tate's canceled in 2020? Didn't, Did, they, didn't something terrible happen? I think happen? we've had Tate's cookies on the pod before. We said the same exact thing, that they were canceled. That sucks. sucks. I think it was like really bad. No, it was about their employees. Yeah. Well, they came out with pumpkin spice cookies. <laughs> <And> <laughs> this morning, I was at this. I was at the store and I saw them, and I realized that we hadn't had a snack lined up yet. So we're gonna have Tate's pumpkin spice cookies because what screams back to school more than Tate's cookies and pumpkin spice? And pumpkin spice? Have you had yet? No, have you? This season, you've had these? No, I'm talking. Have you had your PSL? I have not from Starbucks, from Dunkies. I've had a few. I've had a few from Dunkies, no from Starbs. No, I haven't had my Starb teeny, which maybe I'll get today. Caramel, iced caramel macchiato, oat milk, sub vanilla for pumpkin. I'm ready to go after this. Yeah. We're kind of cookied up for these past two episodes. Let's we're, open We're this. in our cookie era. We are. Good children to the cafeteria. They smell so, so good. fucking good. This smells like a candle. Oh. That's a little bit nuts to me because at the beginning you're like, pumpkin. It at smells the end, better than it tastes. Yeah. It smells more like a pumpkin than it tastes like a pumpkin. The cookie itself is actually just giving me cookie. You know what I mean? It's just... <laughs> you, like, I know I just used... Cookie in the sentence twice to explain the cookie. That was the, the best thing you've ever said on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it, it's not bringing much flavor to the, the table. Cookie is giving cookie. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's giving, giving, giving cookie. It's actually like cookie. not even a finishable cookie to me. Like I'll finish the whole bag of it at some point. Wait, I kind of love us being super blunt and honest. It's undeniable that the texture of this cookie is fantastic. I love a crispy. I cook. hate a crispy cook. Really. I love a chewy. Obviously. I'm a chewy It's head. bringing a completely different energy to this space. A crispy space. cookie is, like, nice when you're feeling like you want to be, like, chic in some mm. ways. Chewy is, like, you want to actually have a good cookie. The only way to justify this cookie. Cook- milk. Yes, but. Ice cream sandwich. Absolutely. No. You know why you can't ice cream sandwich with this. Because the crunch is too intense. You Thank need a chewy cookie for an ice cream sandwich. You, Sorry. Joe. This is a perfect dip cookie if you were to break this up a little bit with a fall style dip what kind of dip i'm almost listen this is not even giving me enough pumpkin so if it was to be some sort of a a whipped whipped pumpkin pumpkin dip (laughs) (laughs) a whipped pumpkin cinnamon dip yes good children to the guidance office 
Oh, we do have a good... We have tea. So listeners have been calling in with tea. On? They are going on dates with their best friend's brother. BFB. BFB. My B-F-B. best friend's brother B-F-B. is the one for, for me. me. Does the best friend know? Well, I don't really know, but we're going to listen. We're coming in like a few calls into the story. Okay, boys. I'm back. I'm here again. I am reporting live. It's like 1.30 in the morning. I just got home from another date with my best friend's brother. So let me take it back a little bit. I have had the same best friend, just like you two, since fifth grade. And I am in a pickle because this summer I have started going out with my best friend's brother. Repeat after me. BFB. BFB. My best best friend's friend's brother. My best friend's brother. Um, yeah. Shout out to Victoria. Anyway, we have been going out, hanging out every single day. It's very platonic, but it's also very intimate. We have not kissed, but we're cuddly. We're flirty. We're going to the movies. We're going out to eat. We're texting. We're doing all the things. Why won't he make a move on me? Is it because of the friendship? Why won't I make a move on him? I do not want to be the one to do it. I know what high stakes there are. This person is never leaving my life. That's guaranteed. So what do I do? Do I wait for him to make a move? Do I make the move? It's literally bubbling inside of me. All I want to do is kiss his face. Okay? So recap. He's my best friend's brother, my best friend's twin brother, and uh, so help. Thank you. I'm so sorry. The way that you waited to the end to say it was the twin twin brother, brother. completely different. I want to say. The way that she was speaking, that was giving Delilah from 106 Point. You know what I mean? (laughs) She was. I was going to say there's something like so. Soothing. It's so familial, like, hearing listeners call in because I'm like, literally, we all tell stories the same way. We all are anxious in the same exact way. Like, th- there's so many parts where, like, that is me. That is me calling yes. into a podcast. Yes. Does your wow. best friend know about the dates? Does the best friend know? Does the twin of the brother know that you're going on dates with them? I, I, they have to. Uh, they uh, yes, right, because it's every day. It's every day. But is it dates? But is is it dates or is, is it he... date? So best friend, best friend, are you hanging out with the best friend still? If you're seeing the brother every single day, we have so many questions. There needs to be. There, I'm sure they're hanging out together as well. But if it's platonic, what would you do? I need to know. What would not you that do? It matters, but like, if what I had ages? a twin brother who was gay, so hot. I, she didn't describe this person as like the hot, but like and I'm talking twin. so insanely hot, like the most perfect looking man and gay. What would you do? I mean, I would actually hope that you guys would get together. I, listen, if there was a blessing from you, sure. But there's no world where there wouldn't be. Yeah. I think it's, I don't know for me. It would be tough because... What if it didn't go well? And what if it ended poorly? Like, to her point, she's, she's going to see him. They're nev- never going away. You're How always going to be How poorly can it end I guess, is I guess my right. thing. You know what I mean? If it's not like – if you're not interrupt, it's not like it's the best friend. Yeah. It's not like you're going to lose anything no. with this. It's literally like it's the brother. But I think to her point, if you want to kiss his face – if it's been that long and you haven't kissed, it's gonna be so hot. Oh it's gonna my be, god! It, I can already like. No, I'm not gonna think about the passion of your kiss. Can you imagine? But, like, can you imagine you've been hanging out with someone all summer? You're both like DTF, but neither of you have made a move. The moment that move is made, and if I will say, I will say, Joe, if you were to be hanging out with your best friend's brother, yeah. All Your summer. brother. My brother. All, all summer. summer. And like cuddling, like you felt that intimacy was very platonic, amazing. 
if you were to kiss him and it wasn't passionate, it was like a little, like, it was just like, what would you do? Like, where would your mind go? My mind doesn't even go to that scenario, like, in the first place. Like, I don't think that would happen. Hmm. I'm just thinking, like, I don't think it's a... And that was it? Yeah, I'd kind of be like, something's up here. What's up? Yeah. Let's chat. But I don't have that kind of thought. I think process, she can. Though. I think she can ask the the best friend, the best friend, but also be like, "Does the best can I kiss you?" Know? Works for any situation. Yeah, but she doesn't want to make the move. Is she gonna keep waiting? Well, is it one of these? Uh, you know. No, when I have cut- no idea what you just so did. You're cut- so what I was doing was I was cuddling. That was me cuddling. You're being like spoon? That was me being spoon, kind of. Like, you're like nestling, and then you look up. You give them the eyes when you look up like a... No. And then that's like when they should lean in for it. No? Is that Belly who called in? Is this not the summer I turned pretty? We- this is basically the summer it's I the turned pretty. It's the summer you turned pretty. Like, that's what's happening. Don't you have to be like, it's been really fun hanging out with you. Like, I've actually always, like, kind of hoped that we would kiss. You know? Yeah. Throw it into his court. Just make it his responsibility, but say it. Be like, I was always hoping that you were going to kiss me this summer. That's how I would do it. And he's like, oh. Oh, you were thinking that? <laughs> <laughs> I actually wouldn't go back to school. <laughs> no. I wouldn't go end. back to school. It'd be the end. Um. Wow, yeah, I think that talking through it, we gotta know if the if the best friend knows, and you have to call back in. And by the end of this saga, I think you're gonna end up being a guest on the podcast I because I'm invested. Agree. I imagine our listeners are invested. This is a story that should be told. If the best friend doesn't know, if I'm the, even more obsessed with you. Is the best friend? Are they opposite sex? I think it's a cis. Sister. Oh no, I don't know if we actually know. We that. don't know that. What if? What if the best friend is in love? <laughs> so it's the summer I turned for now. We're actually yes. just using the plot. We're yeah. Jenny Hanning it. Yeah. Um, do you think this happened to Jenny Han? The Jenny Han? Do you think this is Jenny Han calling in? Jenny. Jenny's looking for another <laughs> season and she wants us, us to, write to write it. it. Wow. Whoa. I mean, this episode took you places we've never been before. No. We went, we turned pretty. We talked about school. We actually processed the sexual identity of Lowe's. We talked about... We talked about our relationship to Jesus <laughs> Christ. Well, I wow. guess we'll see you next week for a brand new episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to Good Children, and don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate five stars, write a little review on Apple Podcasts, please. Write a little review. I'm reading all of them. There's some beautiful ones. Some Only one person re- did what we said and said they changed my life when I need a TV show, but <laughs> someone did it and I really laughed. And all it takes is one person to just say they changed my life and they need a TV, TV show. show. That's all you have That's to write. All you have to say. <laughs> um, and you know where to find us across all platforms at Good, Good Children, Children Pod. Pod. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella, TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky, at Joe Hedges, and at Be Quiet Joe on TikTok. And to all of our listeners that are heading back to school. Have fun. Have fun. Be yourself. Good luck. You got this. You slay all day. All day. And if you aren't going back to school, that's fine. That's almost better. That's almost better. Show up tomorrow to work. Show up tomorrow in any situation. Like it's the first day of school. Like it's the first day of school. Protractor in hand. Calculator. $300 right now. I'll send you the syllabus. Until then, we'll see you next week. See you next week. And we'll see you on Patreon. Michelle Obama, purse so heavy, getting Oprah dollars. Boss. Michelle Obama, purse so heavy, getting Oprah dollars.